zero. Uh, is for every particle, there's an antiparticle. For every positive charge, there's a negative charge. And so to us, it looks like nothing's there. There's nothing to interact with. Uh, similar, similarly, for other fields and forces, space is infinitely positively curved and infinitely negatively curved. So that at a macroscopic scale, it appears flat. That's where we get the, the uh, erroneous value uh, for the cosmological constant. Uh, for, so the cosmology is saying that uh, vacuum energy density is 10 to the negative nine joules per meter cubed. Uh, because at that large of a scale, the infinite positive curvature and infinite negative curvature cancels out and that's roughly flat, roughly even. Uh, so it's only in conditions where there is a gradient in the structure of the vacuum that particles, energy, or forces are observed. This is gonna be a key insight for us on a technological development uh, uh, application of harnessing the quantum vacuum energy. You need a gradient uh, polarization in the field so that, that averaging out isn't a net zero energy. You need a gradient so that um, it can be uh, harnessed. Uh, so for instance, spin induces a gradient in the structure of space. That's one of the reasons why it's expected that uh, the vacuum fluctuations uh, in the hadron, in the proton, are a vortex. Why there's spin there? Uh, because that induces a gradient in the structure of space. So if you picture space as comprised of infinite little polarizable units, then vo vortices in this quantum vacuum plasma will appear as substantive, having mass, charge, and binding forces uh, like strong gravity and electromagnetism. Another way to describe the formation of a gradient in space is vacuum polarization. And indeed, it has long been predicted that with sufficient vacuum polarization, uh, the particles that abound in the vacuum will be released, freed, emitted. This is the case with the hawking unruh effect. In this case, it's strong gravitational curvature that's producing your gradient in the vacuum structure. Uh, and that's what enables uh, the particles, the particle pairs, uh, to disassociate. Uh, and in the focus of our discussion here, uh, the Schwinger effect uh, is another way to generate this vacuum polarization. And instead of an extremely strong gravitational field, uh, you have an extremely strong electrical field that is causing your uh, ability to uh, separate those balancing yin-yang particle pairs. Uh, so if you get a strong enough uh, electrical field, you can actually get those uh, positron electron pairs of the quantum vacuum oscillations to disassociate. Uh, in the quantum field extension of the idea of the Dirac seat, I remember I, I had mentioned that a little bit earlier uh, that um, Dirac uh, explained the positive energy value of electrons by positing that there's an infinite sea of negative energy uh, electrons and as well uh, holes in that, which are called positrons. Uh, th th this has since been extended into the idea of a, a, a quantum field uh, for leptons, but uh, one of the energetic modes of the quantum vacuum are these uh, electron-positron pairs. Uh, now, no electrostatic field is measured at a macroscopic scale of the vacuum in free space because the negative charge of the electron is balanced by the positive charge of the positron, as are their mass, spin, momentum, and other properties. However, uh, if we were to generate an extremely strong electrical field, then instead of continuously cycling between creation and annihilation, 
the different charges would cause the particle pairs to accelerate in different directions in the electric field. The electric field is increasing. Uh, under such a condition, the particles would appear to emerge from the quantum vacuum and you would have observable electrons and positrons generated in the extremely strong electrical field. And this is the Schwinger effect, uh, first hypothesized by Julian Schwinger over 70 years ago. Uh, in the Schwinger effect, matter is created from a strong electric field. Uh, vacuum polarization causes emission of those electron positron particle pairs. And this, in a sense, is a decay of the electron field. Essentially, the electric field can only become so strong before all that energy in the field just starts going to generating electrons and positrons uh, from the quantum vacuum. Uh, th that's a, another way to kind of uh, look at it. Uh, now, uh, the, the Schwinger limit, uh, the, the field strength, the electrical field strength needed uh, for this vacuum polarization, uh, as predicted by Julian Schwinger, uh, is actually very large. Uh, 10 to the 18 volts per meter or 10 to the nine uh, Tesla. Uh, that's the magnetic field strength needed. Um, now again, uh, this is thought to only be found, these kind of field strengths, a billion Tesla uh, in 10 to 11, uh, a, a, a billion to a trillion Tesla or 10 to the 18 uh, for uh, your electric field strength. Uh, th this is thought to only occur around objects like neutron stars and black holes, massively compact astronomical objects. Uh, and in fact, the, the Schwinger effect is analogous to lunar Hawking radiation, uh, where instead of an electric electrical field, it's the extreme, extremely strong gravitational field of a black hole that causes separation of the vacuum particle pairs. In both instances, a gradient is being generated in the vacuum energy density that causes mass energy to be extracted from the vacuum. And this is a key consideration in developing technologies that can tap the quantum vacuum energy. The key is to generate that gradient in the vacuum structure. Uh, and indeed, uh, the field strength involved for both effects are so strong that uh, it's thought to only occur around uh, neutron stars and black holes, high energy astronomical objects. Uh, th these are often also called uh, magnetars when they, they have those extremely high magnetic field strengths, like you know, a billion or more Tesla. Uh, this property of black holes to generate particles and energy from the quantum vacuum uh, is one reason why uh, this research is at the Resonance Science Foundation consider black holes as engines of mass energy creation. Uh, in fact, such astronomical objects are the natural laboratories for testing these theories of matter creation in quantum field theory and for testing the substantive nature of the vacuum. Uh, however, uh, for things like vacuum polarization, uh, we need a analog system, uh, a more clever mechanism uh, for testing these extremely large field strengths producing vacuum polarization. Because um, right now, it's not entirely feasible to create a little neutron star or black hole in the lab, but there are other ways of simulating those kind of conditions. Uh, and that's what we're going to uh, review here, the experiment uh, that did just that. Uh, now here, uh, this is uh, from a report showing uh, by refringence of light from a neutron star as it passes through the polarized vacuum structure. So the magnetic field of the magneton is so strong that it's ordering the vacuum into like a crystalline phase. That's like spatial symmetry breaking, vacuum polarization. And the light passing through it undergoes birefringence, like it was passing through a crystal. 
crystals oftentimes uh, cause uh, vacuum, uh, uh, 